everybody. Welcome to You'll Probably Agree. Today I have on uh, Cinephile slash uh, Chicago comic Adam Burke. Uh, I've seen Adam for, man, how many years have I seen you at Laugh Factory now just bouncing around because I'm the video guy there. Yes, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ever since I mean, yeah, ever since you started working there, I guess. Yeah. And like, I didn't get you were Cinephile until I like saw some of your like Facebook posts and you were referencing Humphrey Bogart films and things like that. And really obscure movies were like, uh, you know, let's say a press accredited quote unquote critic, you know, if anyone <laughs> really wants to call me that. Uh, I mean, like, I guess I'm officially that, but I still am like, am I really though? Like a lot of you guys know more classics than I do, but I, I remember thinking like, man, this guy knows a lot of movies. I got to see like which one he uh, thinks is overlooked or a lot of people don't point out. And I think the first one you wrote down was the 49th parallel. Yeah. I pull up the trailer and I'm like, huh, so this is like a bunch of Nazis and I'm supposed to feel bad for them. And then, <laughs> but then I see the movie and it's a very different case. So why did this movie pop up in your head? Um, yeah, I think you, um, I always have a couple that you know, that are kind of my go-to's movies that people don't really know, but I'm like, um, you know, I, I do like a lot of old movies. And, I, and the thing is, I watch bad old movies. And like, I watch a lot of, like there's a whole genre of 1930s um, let's put on a musical musicals and I'll watch those. And I, <laughs> and I know they're bad. And, um, and I've, I've, I've watched a lot of the battle movies, but there are ones that kind of percolate. And um, this is a movie from 1941. It's by a, uh, a, a writer director duo that are so, sort of Coen brothers esque mm. in, in, in the sense that, um, you know, they are, Strictly speaking, one's a writer and the other's the director, but they do, they're very collaborative and they're known as, uh, they're, it's Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger, and they're known as either Powell and Pressburger or the Archers. Mm -hmm. um, and I love, I love a lot of their films, a lot of their, their big 40s and 50s films that, that, um, you know, that, that cinephiles might know, like Michael. Uh, and a big fan of um films like um the life and death of colonel blame which is one of my favorite films um, oh i just saw but, that uh, one uh, recently actually yeah yeah yes, i love that's that one film. of scorsese's favorites so i'm like okay i'll check mm -hmm. this one out it's like almost three hours yeah it's, it's very similar to lawrence of arabia where it's about like he doesn't like liberate anyone but it's about someone who gets older and then kind of gets you know curmudgeon about his, his, his successes despite you know the fact that he like tried to do great things but yeah i did love the uh, similarities between it but they're, they're kind of i guess subtle so the life and death of colonel blimp is sort of you know it, it's a lot of times heralded as a um as one of the uh, the great british films mm -hmm. it is hard I, i've tried showing it to people a lot of people have a hard time with it because it is long um and uh the life and death of colonel blimp is weird because it's a war it's it's a war movie it's not really a war movie, but it's a movie about a soldier and there's no war in it. You never see it in the entire, yeah. it's a three hour film about a general, about the life of this career soldier. And I don't think anyone ever fires a shot. You never see a gunfire, you never see a tank, you never see, it's all about sort of the, so I've always been really into this, um, this filmmaking duo because they make films that are just, they're not weird. They're not like avant-garde David Lynch types, but they make films that are just like, huh, you made that choice. And um, I was trying to watch as many of their films as, I think I've seen about a third or a half of their films, but I was working my way through and I, I heard of this movie, 49th Parallel, and it's a very strange, I think it's a brilliant film, but it's very strange. That like, it, they sort of like, they were given a, you know, they were sort of given a remit. They were given a, it was the early years of the war. I think it was made in 1940. Mm -hmm. America wasn't in the war. And um, yeah. they were sort of given this brief, you know, make a propaganda film. And as you said, they made this film, which is, you know, to get the allies riled up and it, certainly to let the Americans know, hey man, Canada's in the war. Canada's right on the board. That's what the 49th parallel refers to. Yeah, and it's it, it was a film that was supposed to go, hey, you know, this is right. This could be right on your doorstep, and I, I don't know if you've seen many like propaganda-ish films from this era, 
Uh, um, I know of them. I haven't seen them, but like, I mean, if, if, if we're talking about the German side, I know about those movies. Well, Lenny Riefenstahl. So, funny yeah, enough, yeah, Riefenstahl. Exactly. Like uh, the, the Triumph of the Rifle. <laughs> he forgot the title, but I did. Triumph of the Will. Yeah. It's funny. Like her whole career, like after that movie, she tried to erase herself from that. And everyone's <laughs> like, no, fuck you, Nazi bitch. You're not getting that. <laughs> But I know, I know that even the director of, of this film, of the 49th Parallel, said that he thinks he gave Goebbels a run for his money. But it is, yeah. <laughs> but it is weird. Yeah. We're like, there's a lot of America. Once America enters the war, they have a lot of propaganda-ish films. Um, hold on, there's a film I wanted to reference um, called uh, "The Cross of Something." The, the, uh, the it's called "The Cross of Lorraine." Um, wow. Like that's a classic example of an early right on the cusp um, American war movie where the America hadn't even got into the war yet, but so they made a propaganda film that was about French soldiers who get captured by the Germans, and but it's like everyone in it is American, like Gene Kelly's in it, you know, and Peter Laurie is the bad guy. So that's like there's a lot of classic early American propaganda films, but I think Forty Nine Parallels so strange because it. Because what normally the propaganda with a propaganda film you do one of two things, you well you do, you do one of three things I should say you show how great you guys are you know a triumph of the will like we're awesome our country's great and worth preserving, you paint the other side as being baby eating monsters and lunatics and crazy people that need should be mm -hmm. destroyed, mm -hmm. or you or you basically. You know, do like with the John Wayne, the Fighting Seabees, or you know, the Sands of Iwo Jima. You do, um, you do a recent battle that you guys have won, and you've gone, "Hey, we're we're going to win this thing," and and <laughs> Forty Nine Parallel kind of does none of that. It, what 49th Parallel does, I, I don't know if you want to do the plot or if you want. No, to no, I, you'd probably summarize the plot much better than me. <laughs> 49th Parallel does what, what it does. Um, and it, it's a film made by, you know, it's, it's really about, it's a British film, but it's really about the British Empire. It's set in Canada because that was, especially at the time, Canada was very, but still part of the Commonwealth and very connected to Britain. Um, it's about a German submarine um, that's, uh, you know, raiding Canadian shipping. They're about to run out of fuel. They the fuel yeah. fuel. They send in a landing party to get some provisions of fuel um, in Canada. And as the landing party goes up, uh, their submarine gets gets destroyed by Allied forces, by 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 the by the good guys. And now the film turns into this thriller where there's six. Nazis trapped in Canada and the film was about them getting out of Canada so it's the kind of film that should be completely flipped it should be about our side about six of our guys trapped in Berlin but as a propaganda film they do the opposite and the fact that it works always blows my mind and yeah. you basically see um you see these six, and it also, it's a weird, if you're, I don't know if you know the, the term picaresque, because it's a weird mm -hmm. film too, because it's a picaresque where it's like, it's these basically these six Nazis adventures in Canada, but. Yeah, yeah. it felt I, like the Three Stooges that they were like Nazis and just keep <laughs> bumbling around like, oh no, don't, don't reveal your identity. Hey, we're Nazis, yeah. oh you idiots, shoot them. <laughs> well, well but, but then that doesn't really happen though. I, I think mm -hmm. what, what, I think the film is, you know, it might not come across as that subtle now, but I think it comes, it's pretty subtle for the time in which these Nazis kind of um, come across various types of Canadian personality, like in the, you know, the, one of the first times is this, you know, pretty over the top portrayal by Laurence Olivier <laughs> yeah. of, of, a, of a fur trapper who doesn't even know <laughs> the war is on. He's been out trapping furs for a year yeah. and he comes in and he runs across these nazis and these nazis he comes face to face and at first he's like i don't give a shit that there's a war on i'm french canadian it's got nothing to do with me i'm apolitical and then he comes across these nazis who are kind of brutal but again even within these six nazis they're not all lunatics they're not all nazis there's one main nazi who's mm -hmm. a diehard uh, fanatic 
And yeah. he's the one who, every time he meets a Canadian, he tries to convert them to Nazism. Like, you're right. He is, he is pretty bad. He's such a fanatic. He can't stop being a Nazi. Like, yeah. he'll, he just he'll blows keep, their cover every time. Yeah, <laughs> they get it on the down low. And as soon as people seem even slightly, um, he thinks there might be slightly on their side, he'll go, have you, cons- have you read Mein Kampf? Like, well, <laughs> he literally pulls out his copy yes of uh, <laughs> yeah and then they like even use some language we're like wow i have not heard that in a lot of movies you know <laughs> dropping like n-words and stuff i'm like whoa well they don't drop the n-word but he does what, what, what's uh, there's a really funny well not funny but a really fucked up fact about this movie mm-hmm. is that one point um he yes he goes on a diatribe about the different racial types mm-hmm. which was a sort of which was a big sort of nazi thing and he says, you know, this kind of person is is lower than this person who's really close to this. And they had to, they cut they cut 19 minutes out of this movie when they released it in America. And they cut that speech out when they just showed it in the South, because I think they they thought too many people in the South would either agree with it or or they were like, hey, we're racist, but we're not Nazis, you know? <laughs> so I think... Um... Well, not so much... <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. There goes that demographic in my show. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, but so... But what is... I think it's interesting about it, in these six survivors they have, they do have... Um, there's different t- there's different types of German. There is... They definitely have the one bad guy, and he is a died in the wool, you know, uh, horrible Nazi type. But they also have journeymen. There's sort of like, there's a one guy who's been in the party well way longer, but he's just sort of a journeyman sea, uh, like a sea, seafarer. And then there's, there's, two, there's one guy who's kind of a thug and there's the other guy who's like a smart thug who's just like, hey yeah. man, I'll, I'll follow orders as long as, as long as it works for me. So he's kind of like an opportunist. And then there's this, this other character again not to give too much away but the character of vogel who's a german christian yes who is a baker and there's i think probably the best sequence in the film is when yep. they come across this family of hutterites which is a sort of you know amish-esque mm-hmm. german um uh german commune and i think that whole sequence is amazing because yeah. it's this you know it's this notion and it's it's also um, anyway, I, I, I've been talking too much. I don't know what, no. what you thought. No, it's okay. I, I actually like what you were saying because um, the way that Vogel sort of discovers himself, I always wondered, like, you know, we know Nazis are evil and they're horrible and blah, 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 blah. But I don't see a lot of movies where maybe there's a Nazi who doesn't believe in what they're doing. and. Yeah. Is either they never believed in it or they were mind washed as it as a kid. And yeah. Vogel was one of those guys, he was having the conversation. So I watched it a couple times now. And he had that conversation with uh, one of the, uh, you know, sort of like, uh, forgive my lack of terminology, but l- let's just say not uh, Amish, Amish people, but yeah, but the Amish guy, and he basically, after he returned the daughter and he said, you know, wh- why did you become a soldier? He said, well, little boys like to play soldiers. And yeah, in yeah, culture, yeah. it kind of becomes that. And how he kind of grows as a kid. Like, even when they kill him, like, you know, I, I mean, I'm spoiling a movie that's God only knows how many years old now. So, <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, I think it's 70 years old. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 70 years maybe, ago. Maybe, maybe 80, 80. It's 80 years old, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, for, it was came out in 42 yeah and uh it was made or no i think it came out in 41 if i yeah. am correct here and yeah there was basically an advertisement for the americans to get back into the war but uh i liked uh to circle back to uh, vogel real quick i liked his scene because like they ask him if he has anything he wants to say before he dies and the look on his face mm-hmm. is very peaceful like yeah. he is okay because he his soul is more at peace than theirs so when they right. die they die in misery and of course the way the final nazi i mean it's funny because i love this movie because 
I was rooting for all the main characters to die, you know, yeah. except, except for Vogel at a certain point. Uh, although I'm like, yeah, I feel bad for him, but what did he do off screen, you know, before I can. Uh, but, to, but see, were you, because the thing is, obviously you, you want, you want, you don't want the Nazis to win, but I think what's yeah. brilliant about the movie is that it is sort of like, I, I don't know if you've seen any of like Hitchcock's early stuff. Like oh, yeah. my favorite genre of Hitchcock is the wrong man ones. It, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. um, you know anything like Lady Vanishes or the Thirty Nine Steps. Like this is this is a Hitchcock movie, but the protagonists are Nazis. It's it's yeah. such a fucking weird thing, <laughs> but it's not meant. It's not meant ironically, and it the structure of the movie is like it's just like any any other movie where you be rooting for the hero like yeah. they have a near death experience in a plane like yeah. there's shootouts there's like you know they they go under cover they like you know they have all the planes trains automobiles you know they walk across canada it's all this kind of stuff but it's like you're like it holds your attention and but at the whole time you're like what are they, when is this guy when is this nazi gonna fucking die but and they don't eat it but but i think I, I think it's the best because it it doesn't take that easy option of all germans first of all you know if you look at some of the worst american propaganda it was you know it was don't trust a guy it was literally don't trust a guy who looks japanese it was literally you never know hey he might be calling his uncle it was that this movie deliberately has you know again it's probably its most powerful sequence is a huge family of like first generation german immigrants yeah in this peaceful community and the movie goes not all germans are nazis yes and nazism isn't and and uh, he says, it, Anton Walbrook, as the leader of the Hutterite, says, um, uh, we are Germans, but you are not my brother. Yes. And, uh, it's, yeah, it, yeah. and it's that kind of like, and there's a lot of mo- monologues in the film, and there is a lot of, um, again, for the time, I, I won't say, you know, up and down, I won't say, you know, Obviously, they are working from the prejudices of their time and there's some stuff that doesn't hold up. But for the time, it's pretty nuanced as propaganda. There is some things where, like, you know, there's a lot of, like, you know, Canada is this vast country in which we have all these different types of people and it isn't that great. And, you know, you see the Nazis, do, uh, you know, they, they kill innocent Inuits. Mm. But there's also this thing that the movie, you know, probably couldn't have addressed or maybe they wouldn't even be aware of it but it's also like you know to the native peoples to both the native uh uh the the sort of southern tribes and the inuit people you know the the colonizing powers of the 17 and 1800s they were the nazis yeah like 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 we're the we're the good colonizers we're the good uh invaders you know there is a bit of that and they don't but even the fact that they do show those prominent parts um for for um inuit characters and again it's all shot pretty much all shot in location Mm -hmm. and then they you know they show um you know quote unquote indian day where this part where they celebrate you know they celebrate that part of the canadian heritage and again it's all done i think you know for for a film like this it's done subtly we're like this is what the nazis are not this is what we're not and it's and it's and it's really, really well done. And, and but at the same time, you as a moviegoer and as an entertainment, you're like, how are they going to get out of this? You know, how are yes. these Nazis going to get out of this scrape? Yeah, yeah. There's the entertainment value of it, but at the same time, it is asking more subtextual questions. As you know, what if some of these Nazis are human beings? Uh, what if you know some of them just don't? I mean, you basically have a bunch of people who are absolutely uh, terrified because but the nice thing i like about it is like it doesn't turn into i thought like the whole community of canada was gonna like turn into like violent monsters themselves and want right. to tear apart the nazis and then you're gonna go oh my god this is like the cycle of violence sort of plot line but instead it's more about the subtleties of war and how you have soldiers who are stuck in situations that they can't escape from 
Uh, but at the same time, the, the main character, I think they do kind of turn into a, the villain because he's the guy who tries to convert everyone to Nazism. And of course, it never works out. He sort of makes a fool of himself in a very meta way. I thought, is this the movie's sort of message of saying the Nazis' arrogance and foolishness will, like this character, end up destroying their party? Well, I also think it's a, I thought it was a brilliant choice. To yeah. work from the get go, and what is the actress? Let me look up what the actress. Yeah, because I was I, trying I, to figure out which one he was in it, and I'm like, I sound like an idiot. Like the main uh, character. Was, it's a what so was his it, character's name. It it was Le, uh, Lieutenant Ernst Hurth. Her hurt is the character's name, Lieutenant. and the act the actor is Eric Portman, which I have not Portman, who I've not seen in many things, but I think Eric Portman in this is brilliant because he's got the hardest role because he's he's a, he is both the i would say he's both the protagonist and the antagonist of this movie yeah exactly like at the like a, a, i wonder if the movie goes if it's trying to ask the audience hey are you still rooting for him to be alive or do you want him to die but it makes it very clear like I, he's a bad guy in the end you know like they're like hey I you know what no matter doing, how much you like him like we you're still gonna hate him by the end because he just yeah, progressively get gets worse because the easy choice would have been or the simple choice were like, oh, here's the fucking bad Nazi. He's the he's the um, <laughs> unbreak like he's the uh, you know intractable Nazi. Let's kill him off first. But he's the one who survives the longest. Mm -hmm. And I think, and, and you know, not to give the end, we can probably see where it's going, but not to give the end away. But he does survive the longest, and he does seem to get out. And he has that sort of you know, <laughs> uh, uh, tr let's call it triumph of will. Yeah. But <laughs> but. Right. I think it is, um, again, subtly, I think it, 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 is a, it is a, it's an atypical propaganda movie doing a very typical propaganda movie thing in a subtle way, because what they're saying is, I know that this, this guy who's the most Nazi of the Nazis, I know that he always seems to be winning, or he always seems to find a way out of his situation, Yeah, but stick with it. And we'll get him in the end, which is yeah. what you would want to tell someone at the beginning of something that is shaping up to be a very long war. You know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. it's like, it yeah. look, look, he's a slippery fucker and he keeps getting out of these scrapes. Um, and but in also, the end, he runs out of lies. He runs out of ways to get away from everything, you know? Yeah. He's slippery, and, but he's foolish at the same time, you know? Like, if you're undercover, you don't tell the, you know, bill, the criminals you're undercover. <laughs> but he also, you know, he has this, I think his thing is, you know, he's got this arrogance um, of, like, of Judy and being a Nazi, and we're going to be, you know, art that tells tales of you know, how we stuck with it and we never broke down. And what's I, what I think is fascinating about the movie is that everyone he meets and everyone who, who he seeks to either overturn or like straight up kill or everyone he lectures on how weak and foolish they are, they are all flawed people. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the fur trapper he meets is a guy who doesn't really give a fuck about the war, doesn't mm -hmm. think, think they should be in it, but when it comes down to it, puts his life on the line. Uh, he meets, um, you know, he meets the German, uh, the the Hutterite people, yeah. and um, and even then they have, you know, they have a thing where they have a conversation about how Germans are being interned. Mm -hmm. Like there are Germans who are being like who are seen as spies and being interned, and he's like. Well, this is what we have to do. We go along with it. We're in Canada. Canada's been good to us. And even when Vogel, I don't know if you picked up on that, but when Vogel finally says, hey, can I stay with you? He goes, yeah, absolutely. You can stay yes. with us. Yeah, I remember that. They said, like, you don't care where I come from or who I am. And he said, yeah, but, it, as, but as he long goes, as you do internments or something like yes, that. Yes, yeah, exactly. It'll mean internment. So it's like, yeah. it's like we're not going to hide you. We're yeah. going to turn you over to the authorities. So mm -hmm. like, so, and there is that notion, you know, they thought they were kind of weak um and he meets that british character who thinks he thinks is like decadent and weak and oh i he, love that british character dude he was like i was watching him like damn man this is power of the dog before power of the dog you know I, was <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that yet but so i i, I oh. want to get the rest. but leslie howard yeah leslie howard who's like a great great english actor died, died really young 
But Leslie Howard has a character, and he is, I, I think what they do in this movie, which is brilliant, they have characters who personify the Nazis' view of the West. Mm. So they have characters who are what the Nazis say the West is, or say that the decadent West is. So Beach, they do- Not man enough to stand we, up for yeah, themselves. Uh, like exactly, that. not involved in the war, apolitical. Yeah. But then, then in the moment when they are faced with it, then all these people stand up and they stand for something and they stare these and they stare the Nazi down. And it, it's a great piece of propaganda because it seems like you're almost siding. They like the, <laughs> the speech the speeches they give the Nazis are like like really compelling. <laughs> yeah, because then, they come at them with compassion sometimes, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially with uh I, I'm, uh, what's the name of the Amish people in the movie? What's the uh, the the Hutterites? The Hutterites, yeah. Like yeah. the Hutterites say, look, although we are brothers, as you mentioned, you know, we yeah. are. I am not your brother, but we teach love and compassion instead of right. hatred, and that's why it won over Vogel in the end because you right. saw people who didn't want to kill him; they wanted to talk to him, and that's right. what I thought was beautiful about that aspect of the movie. Yeah, and it's it's also um, I think. Uh, uh, what's his name? Portman's character, uh, Leutnant Hurt. He has a line where he, they're you know they're in town and they're trying to figure out how to escape. And he's got a map, and he go and he, and he says something like, "Oh, they're remarkable. These Canadians, they'll give you anything." Yeah. And it's all like his everything that he, the Hurt means as a um, as a criticism. Yeah, is is the movie going no this is actually the strength this is how we're going to fucking defeat these bricks and but yeah. they again in you know movies of this time there's a lot of speechifying and there's a fair amount of speechifying in this but i think it's way more subtle than a lot of other ones you'll see yeah yeah i think it's a great film yeah it is it's funny there are some parts where i watched it where i always have like random questions when i see it like uh first off like how did not ev- how did everybody not die when that plane crashed because they like cut to like the b-roll of like a random plane crashing but it went like head first and i guess because they were out <laughs> of gas they didn't explode like a michael bay movie but at like the same time i'm like yeah but the like the impact from that because you're hitting ground at that speed it's like concrete you know on top of that they like smashed the propeller and everything i think yeah <laughs> I <don't know>. the- <laughs> I just, yeah I, I just remember i saw that scene and went oh that's a odd way to go but yeah but no uh i'm glad you recommended this film uh you know what i was doing some trivia i guess david lean actually did the editing for yeah, it one yeah. time yeah which and then uh the uh british press did complain about how the nazis were viewed as sympathetic in a way but as you said uh the screenwriter eric Pressburgers, Pressburger, uh, yeah. yeah. Rebuttal was that uh, you know you had to have reasonable Germans as well as ruthless ones, you know because right. yeah you need to examine a character. That's what makes a movie work is you need a rounded character that you know isn't just like one note. Oh, here are the bad Nazis. That's what I've seen with propaganda films. So this is funny. This is a propaganda film where it actually has reasoning behind it. Right. And it's not just like bad guy right there. Right yeah well anyways thanks for coming on then no problem uh, really yeah, appreciate yeah. it uh yeah, where thanks can for... you find your stuff uh i'm on atp burke on all the social stuff again that's at a at atp burke on instagram and uh twitter, and, twitter and all that stuff uh, and yeah 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 <laughs> all, all right. that stuff if you want to see us remember to uh, just Google YPA reviews and you can see my written reviews from here and from 25YL on the homepage and all my videos and podcasts and blah, 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 blah. Google YPA reviews and YPA stands for you'll probably agree. And hopefully you'll probably agree that the 49th parallel is a movie worth checking out. You can actually see it on HBO Max if you have it. There's a plug from Warner Brothers. All right. (laughs) Thanks, everyone.